So the first slide that I'm reviewing talks about substance abuse, its impact, and context. And when we talk about substance use, it refers to conditions such as underage drinking, non-medical use of prescription and over-the-counter medications. And these conditions collectively has a major impact on the health and well-being of our nation, particularly our youth. You can see on the slide that with respect to underage drinking, an estimated 10 million people aged 12 to 20 report drinking alcohol during, that, during the past month. That's roughly the size of the population of Michigan. The second bullet notes that some 23 million Americans are currently uh, illicit drug users. That's a population roughly the size of Australia. And then uh, within that category, we're particularly concerned about marijuana use and non-medical use of prescription medications. And in fact, with respect to marijuana in, in young people, marijuana use is now ahead of cigarette smoking for high school seniors as of 2010, so we have to follow that trend carefully. Almost 18 million Americans are classified with alcohol dependence or abuse. And alcohol is a factor in about 40% of deaths from motor vehicle crashes. And then annual costs of substance abuse exceed some $600 billion annually. So this is an enormous uh, impact on the public health of our nation. With respect to leading health indicators for substance abuse, there are two that we are mentioning today. First, adolescents using alcohol or any illicit drugs during the past 30 days and secondly, adults engaging in binge drinking during the past 30 days. This webinar is really focused on the first one, uh, particularly adolescents using alcohol or any illicit drugs during the past 30 days. And we are particularly interested in youth substance abuse because it has such an impact on youth development in so many ways with respect to brain development, uh, exacerbating uh, injury outcomes can lead to death of course, tragically, uh, enhances risky behaviors and has a great impact on many social consequences such as problems at school, aggravating, aggravating physical and mental health related issues, promoting poor peer relationships, causing motor vehicle accidents, as I was already mentioned, leading to poor academic performance, uh, suboptimal school graduation rates, and overall putting tremendous stress on families, neighborhoods, and the nation at large. So I'm now going to share with you some data slides from healthy people to make this uh, really very concrete. This first slide shows alcohol or illicit drug use in the past 30 days for adolescents ages 12 to 17 from 2002 to 2011. Uh, there is some good news here in that the percentage of adolescents in this age category who used alcohol or illicit drugs in the past 30 days has actually decreased by about 24%. That is from a baseline of 22% in 2002 to about 18% in 2011. So that's the good news. We still have a ways to go to reach the Healthy People 2020 target of some 16.6%, as you see here. The number of adolescents that are involved um, by, this, by these trends are some 4.4 million adolescents. That's the estimate that we, we have right now. And then the next two slides show the same data by age, country of birth, and by race and ethnicity. So this next slide shows adolescent or illicit drug use in the past 30 days for adolescents by age. That's the bars on the left-hand side of the slide and by country of birth. And it's great that we can have information by country of birth because that continues to raise very important questions about public health, not only in this country, but globally. On the left-hand side, you can see that as adolescents get older, they have higher risk of alcohol or illicit drug use in the past 30 days, and that rise is quite dramatic. For the youngest adolescents, in, that is 12 to 13 years of age, uh, they have rates of alcohol or illicit drug use in the past 30 days of some 5% or so in 2011. That rises dramatically so that by the time 
an adolescent is 16 to 17 years of age, uh, that risk has gone up to about 32 percent, uh, almost six times more than the rate for the younger adolescents that I already mentioned. So, in short, adolescence is a vulnerable time for substance abuse, and that's what those first three sets of bars shows. On the right-hand side, you see the trends by country of birth. And of interest, adolescents born outside the U.S., currently living in the U.S., report a lower rate of alcohol or illicit drug use than those born within the United States. And we can have some discussion and some speculation about why we are seeing those trends, but it, it raises many fascinating research questions. And then the final slide I am showing are the same uh, outcomes by race and ethnicity in 2008 versus 2011. And as we often stress in these presentations, there are disparities by race and ethnicity. In this particular case, it's Asian adolescents that have the lowest rate of alcohol or illicit drug use. You can see all the way over on the left. And then on the other extreme, it's adolescents who identify with two or more races that have the highest rates of alcohol or illicit drug use, some 25% uh, in 2011. So in short, this is a major public health challenge, particularly for our youth. The trends vary by age, race and ethnicity, and country of birth. And this is a major theme for us who are really committed to healthy kids and then healthy communities and a healthy country for the future. And that's why we're delighted to have leaders uh, on this webinar who can address advancing prevention at the community level.